Now finally a video that pulls all the concepts that we have learned so far together. Uh, in the previous video we learned how to derive moment generating functions. Moment generating function is nothing else but an expectation of this exponential function to the power of tx. Okay, Solving um, expectations on the other hand involve uh, solving an integral of a product of the e to the power tx and times the pdf that the variable is following. And in, we also saw that the exponential distribution has this moment generating function. We didn't go through all this pain in vain because it turns out that once you have the moment generating function and when you differentiate it with respect to little t and evaluate it at zero then you will recover raw moments. This is fantastic news because the, the only other option we had for deriving moments was by solving expectations and expectations involve actually uh, integration. Integration is much harder than differentiation so here lies the advantage of moment generating function because when using moment generating function we differentiate yeah, with respect to t we don't integrate. So let's derive the first uh, four moments of the uh, exponential distribution. Here is the setup all you have to do is just uh, purely differentiate this uh, moment generating function uh, once, twice, three times and four times to get your first, second, third and fourth moment respectively. So let's do one or, one or two examples in detail. Here we've got d over dt of this uh, function here which is our moment generating function just written in a, in a different format. So here in, in these examples we'll use the, the chain rule quite heavily. As a reminder if you uh, want to differentiate a composite function uh, f uh, prime of x say um, then you, what you have to do is take the derivative of the external uh, function uh, times uh, the what's inside and then times the derivative of what's inside. So here we are uh, differentiating with respect uh, to little t and we have this lambda minus t to the power of minus 1. So uh, all we have to do obviously now this is uh, this is the outside here is just outside. So when we differentiate we obviously pull this power here and it decrease or decrement the the power here by 1. Okay. So this is done. This is this bit done. Of course we still have to multiply by what's inside these brackets which is lambda minus t and finally times it by the derivative of what's inside. Now the derivative of what's inside uh, we uh, differentiate with respect to t so this lambda is uh, going to be 0 because it's a constant so we are just left with minus 1 uh, because the derivative of t is just uh, is just 1. Yeah. Now no, that's not the end of it because we still have to differentiate uh, at t equals 0 so when we replace uh, t here with 0 we get something uh, like uh, this. Why? Because uh, lambda here we we'll cross out with uh, one power here and this is going to give you one over the lambda. So this is our uh, first moment, then our second moment is here, exactly the same procedure. Our third moment and our fourth moment is um, given here. So that was very easy. It's a major win because once we have a moment generating function we can uh, generate moments, raw moments obviously on the go. However, obviously the reason why we calculate moments is because we want to know the population parameters, right? Now some people say you know first moment is mean, second moment is variance, third moment is skew and fourth moment is kurtosis. That is unfortunately only partially true while mean indeed is the first uh, raw moment. Variance unfortunately is not the second raw moment. Uh, and um, skew and kurtosis have very little to do with third and raw moments. As we'll see, to calculate skew and kurtosis uh, we need to actually mix these moments together in some ratios. Um, and I will demonstrate this in a second. So if you followed my previous uh, videos you would have seen that uh, mean is just the uh, first raw moment. Okay. So um, in the previous, uh, on the previous page we derived the first four moments here 
one, two, three, and four. Okay, and uh, obviously I said that mean is a, a raw moment, is the first raw moment, so we can take it directly from here. However, variance uh, is not a pure raw moment, it's actually a central moment. However, uh, we can express it in terms of raw moments. We can express it as um, a function of um, second row moment and first row moment squared. So um, from the mm, moments that we just arrived over here we see that second row moment is 2 over lambda squared and the uh, first row moment squared is just this term here which gives us variance of the exponential distribution of 1 over lambda squared. Now let's do skew and uh, excess kurtosis. Skew is the third central moment divided by sigma cubed, okay? The good thing about this is that we can express central moments in terms of row moments and obviously you can just follow this um, expansion. It turns out that uh, skew is actually 2 for exponential distribution and likewise for excess kurtosis if you we can express um, the central fourth central moments in terms of raw moments and I've done a video on that and um, we have to also scale this uh, numerator by sigma to the power of 4 and take away 3 and it turns out that excess kurtosis of the uh, exponential distribution is 6. In a nutshell this a whole exercise illustrates moment generating function is great for deriving raw moments which are here. Unfortunately raw moments are not population parameters with the only exception of the mean of the first raw moment is actually the mean. When we want to calculate variance skewing excess kurtosis uh, it gets a bit messier. Uh, fortunately we can express central moments in terms of raw moments that we just derived and we, we get there eventually and it's much easier than if we had to derive these population parameters uh, solving integrals, i.e. using the uh, definition of expectations. Okay, so hopefully this, um, this little video um, convinced you to the um, advantages of using a moment generating